Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of DSLRtips.com. Sometimes landscape photos can end up looking quite hazy, even though they've been taken under very bright direct sunlight. This particularly affects compositions with very distant subjects in them, such as mountain ranges or canyon rims. One very effective way of cutting through that haze though and delivering a much more vibrant image is to use a polarising filter. They're also great for making blue skies even bluer. In this tutorial I'll show you everything you need to know about using a polarising filter and why it could end up being one of the most essential accessories for any DSLR owner. This photo of a mountain range was taken under very bright sunny conditions but the result looks hazy and is lacking impact. This next photo however was taken just seconds later under exactly the same conditions but using a polarising filter. The difference is quite dramatic. The haze has been eliminated resulting in a much more vibrant image with saturated colours. This is a polarising filter and like most physical filters it simply screws to the end of your lens barrel. To find out the required size for your lens look up its filter thread specification. This will normally also be written at the end of the lens barrel and labelled by a circle with a line going through it like a no entry sign. This kit lens has a fairly standard filter thread of 58mm so that's the size of the polarising filter we'll need to buy for it. Now polarising filters are available in two main types, linear and circular. Circular polarizers, or CPLs for short, are a little more expensive than linear models, but they're designed to not confuse modern autofocus or metering systems, so that's the type you'll need for your DSLR. With the polarizer attached to your lens, you'll notice that the outer section can actually rotate. Now all you need to do to operate it is simply rotate this outer section while looking through your DSLR's viewfinder or at the screen during live view. As you turn the filter, you'll see the polarizing effect gradually increase, then decrease again. If you keep turning the filter around, you'll see this repeat. So simply turn it to the point which looks best to you, then take the photo. You'll also notice that the effect varies in strength depending on your position in relation to the sun. Polarizing filters work like grills that will only allow light to pass through at a very specific angle. This minimizes reflections from scattered sunlight, which in turn is what will allow them to cut through haze and maximize the color saturation on your photos. However, they'll only have this effect on bright sunny days. If it's overcast or cloudy, you won't be able to achieve the same effect, so there's no point in even fitting the filter in these situations. Look at this photo for example. A polarizing filter will have no effect on the sky or the color saturation under these conditions. In the days of film cameras, you could just fit a polarizing filter and be good to go, but there's a couple of things you'll need to bear in mind when shooting digitally. First is that the auto white balance system in your digital camera may compensate for the polarizer and minimize its effect. So for the best results, temporarily switch the white balance to daylight. Even then the effect may not match the intensity that you've seen before, so you may want to also apply a little negative exposure compensation, say minus two thirds or maybe minus one EV. It's also important to note that a polarizing filter will reduce the amount of light entering your camera. That's why the view through the optical viewfinder looks a little bit darker than normal when you're using a polarizer. Now an automatic exposure system will compensate for this automatically, but it will normally do so by reducing the shutter speed, and of course that in turn runs the risk of camera shake. So when you're using a polarizing filter, always keep an eye on the shutter speed and make sure it's fast enough to avoid camera shake. And that's another good reason not to use them unless the conditions are perfect, because otherwise all the polarizing filter will be doing is reducing the amount of light entering your camera and again running the risk of camera shake. So here's that first photo again of some distant mountains taken under very bright direct sunlight. And as you can see it's pretty hazy and lacking impact. Now here's the same composition taken moments later with a polarizing filter turned for the maximum effect and the difference is quite dramatic. Here's another example taken with a polarizer, this time of a canyon early in the morning, again showing very saturated colors. On the non-polarized version, the colors were much more muted. Finally, a telephoto shot of a very distant mountain range which looked very hazy without a polarizer, but here you can see it's got very striking colors. The polarizing effect can end up being quite addictive, but it's not always beneficial to your photos. Sometimes as you're turning that polarizer to make the sky darker and darker, it could actually end up looking almost black. And if you're using a wide angle lens, you may notice that the polarizing effect is greater in one area than another. So you could end up with a photo where the sky is blue in one corner, but almost black in the other. 
Now, of course, this may be the effect that you're after, but it doesn't really look that natural. So if you find yourself in that situation, I'd recommend taking two photos, one with the polarizer and one without, just in case you end up preferring the latter. Another word of warning to people using ultra wide angle lenses, polarizing filters are thicker than normal filters. So they may end up obstructing the corners of your shot and making them slightly darker. So if you're using an ultra wide angle lens with a polarizer, look out for one of the specially thin models that are available. As always, if you've changed the settings on your DSLR, you should reset them so it's ready for action next time. Here I'll put the white balance back to auto and the exposure compensation to zero. And if the conditions aren't sunny or you've gone indoors, always remember to remove the polarizer altogether. Polarizing filters are an essential accessory for any DSLR owner, and they're about the only type of filter that can't be simulated through software. Polarizers aren't just about deep blue skies and saturated colors though. You can also use them to reduce or even eliminate surface reflections from non-metallic subjects. And I'll be showing you how to do that in another tutorial. But in the meantime, if you'd like to find out more about using a polarizer for landscape shots, then head on over to www.dslrtips.com. There you'll find full details about this tutorial, including pricing for polarizing filters, additional tips and techniques, a step-by-step -step guide that accompanies this video, and also the opportunity to show us your own shots taken with a polarizing filter. So once again, if you'd like more information, head on over to dslrtips.com.